as Christians, as followers of, of Jesus, as, as disciples of the Most High King, how are we to navigate politics, to navigate racial tension or, or COVID-19? I mean, let's establish something before we even touch these topics. The combination of racial tension, COVID-19, and this, this upcoming presidential election has led America into complete pandemonium. I mean, complete disorder, complete chaos, complete confusion. Yes, this is the state of America right now, and it, it doesn't seem to be getting better anytime soon. Christian or not, politics seems to be the filter for everything, doesn't it? I mean, Christian or not, it seems all we do here in America is obsess over the racial war, the COVID numbers, Democrat or Republican, he said, she said, and this, this list goes on and on. So here in America, it is complete divide. You've got this side versus that side. Many on one side are refusing to wear a mask, rejecting data and safety protocols, and running with every single COVID-19 conspiracy theory out there. I mean, some in this camp may say that systematic racism isn't even real, and racial injustice is just an excuse for black people to use. I mean, despite claiming to be the party for evangelical Christianity, their favorite conservative personalities influence their worldview much more than their Bibles do. Sadly, they justify their own hate and their judgment based on the fact that the extremists on the other side have just gone too far. Then on the other side, you've got violence, you've got rioting, pure mayhem being justified as protest. I mean, a culture is forming that bullies people by saying, you must agree with everything that we stand for or else. I mean, for example, while the phrase Black Lives Matter is of course true and a worthy mantra right now, the organization itself has other objectives that are questionable. Questionable to say the least. Many which are not even race related. Yet if you dare speak out about it or hesitate to join the movement, you are tagged as a bigot. You're tagged as a racist, a sexist, a homophobe. And then you're annihilated on social media and rejected by all. Satan is working overtime to assure that every angle and every conversation is steered by this narrative. And what is happening is what I mentioned before. Complete divide. I mean, it's a complete dismantling of any unity that existed prior to 2020. And what do we do? We just continue to feed off of what he's offering and we don't even see it. Why? Because we aren't on guard. We have no spiritual sight. See, this enemy, he is crafty. I mean, what he does is keeps us bogged down in the world, eyes fixed on temporal problems and temporal solutions. Isn't this true? I mean, think about it. If we all would wear a mask, then we would get some sort of normalcy, right? If we could hurry and get a vaccine, we all would be okay. If we could get Trump out of office and Biden in, maybe our country would be in a better place. Or if Trump gets reelected, he's going to save America. I mean, once the Q takes down the globalist, we'll have freedom again. I mean, are you guys serious? I mean, do you really think that there's hope in any of that? Non-Christians, I get it. You, you get a pass because you don't even know Jesus. But you Jesus followers, are you kidding me right now? Do you really think that your effort to speak out about masks or your Second Amendment rights or politicians or being anti-vax or whatever else your obsession is today is really going to change the world? I mean, this logic suggests that electing the right candidate or you keeping your guns or mask or no mask or maybe, maybe the Illuminati being exposed and the global powers being taken down are going to solve this world's problems. News flash, my friends. It won't and it never will. Why? because the true problem has been the same since the beginning of time. It is our sin. And the only solution remains the same. 1 John 2, 2 clearly states it. Jesus is the answer for our sin. Not just my sins, but the sins of the whole world. My sin and your sin. That means without him, there is no hope. So just stop trying. We are just putting band-aids on wounds that, that will never heal. So I want to admit my struggle. I mean, I have gotten so caught up in all of this. I have put my faith in things other than Jesus. I mean, I have made that mistake of thinking that things other than Jesus could fix this mess that we see in front of us. I mean, I've fallen way short in this area, so I come before you admitting this. I mean, it was the conviction of being a follower of Jesus, of knowing his word and seeing his, his example and knowing that I was falling way short of his expectations. 
to all my friends that are following Jesus. This is absolutely unacceptable. And we cannot allow this to happen. We have to stop putting our focus on politics. We have to stop putting our focus on the headlines. We have to stop putting our focus on our rights. We have to stop putting our focus on researching all the evil that is out there. We don't have to research that. We already know it is an evil world and it's dominated by the Antichrist spirit. And it will be until Jesus comes back and fixes it. Until then, we're called to advance the kingdom. And how can we advance the kingdom when we are so focused on all of these temporal earthly things? Guys, we can't. Philippians 2, 12 through 14 gives us some insight. And we as Christ followers must stop and digest this. Paul wrote, do all things without grumbling and disputing, that you may be blameless and innocent, children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast to the word of life. So we see the scenario as stated by Paul. We are Christians living in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation. We can all agree that this is facts, right? Before we go any further, we must agree on that. If we want to be honest, I think crooked and twisted is an understatement. So now that we can agree on that, what are we to do? Which side do we support? How do we form our viewpoints on these matters and handle these conversations? Well, first, we have to change filters. We must toss out the political and the cultural filters and upgrade to a biblical filter. I mean, take a look at what Paul said and how he ended that verse, saying, holding fast to the word of life. In order for Christians to live in this world, the Bible it, it must be our source for everything. God's word has to be the influence forming all of our opinions, leading all relevant conversations and shaping our entire perspective. I mean, it is the living, breathing word of God, always true, always right, and always giving us the better way. When we know the word, when we keep to the word and we abide in the word, our opinions and our actions, guess who they become like? They become like Christ. This is what prevents us from conforming to this crooked, twisted thinking of the world. As a Christian grows in knowledge and wisdom, devotion to a political party or even a, a nationality begins to, be, to seem so trivial by comparison to our devotion to Jesus. When we abide in Christ and we grow in knowledge, we begin placing our identity in Him alone. As He conforms us to His image, grumbling and disputing becomes less natural of a response to the circumstances that we see around us. Eventually, our argumentative nature, it gets replaced with a genuine desire to be blameless and innocent, which flows from humility. And finally, as we abide in His Word and we, we put on Jesus' character, we begin to shine Him, which is so important right now. My friends, this world, it needs less of us and more of Jesus. How can we shine when we aren't abiding in Him, but abiding in CNN, abiding in Instagram, abiding in Facebook and Fox News and what, whatever else you're obsessing over? Friends, we can't do that. Jesus, he, He's called us to be passionate about creating Christians that will be faithful, biblical, Countercultural and spiritually minded. We aren't called to be responsible for making America great. <laughs> We're called to help the church be the church. We are called to help the church be the radical outpost of the kingdom of Christ. And yes, if you are a Christian, you, you have work to do. And it doesn't involve obsessing over politics and, and the increasing cases of coronavirus that we see every day or having to wear a mask or not, or if the queue is real. I mean, seriously, my friends, what we see around us is temporary. That means what we, we see is going to fade. And I'm here to tell you that the only one that will remain is Jesus. Only his word will last forever and we must cling to it. This is what will produce brave Christ followers who will shine like bright lights in this crooked and twisted generation. A generation in need of regeneration, which only comes from Him.